Hi! In this video series, I'm going to be introducing you to topic modeling, and I'm going to show you how to do it using the Python library Gensim as a wrapper for Mallet, the machine learning for language toolkit. So what is topic modeling? Well, it's essentially the practice of using an unsupervised machine learning algorithm to discover latent topics in an input corpus. The idea is you can expose semantically related terms or topics that were used to construct the documents in the corpus. By using it, we can quickly assess what each document was about and how words within those documents semantically relate to each other. There are a wide variety of projects that use topic modeling, but among my favorites is the Signs at 40 project. This project illustrates intellectual shifts in feminist scholarship from the first 40 years of the Signs Journal, which you can find here. Another excellent study using topic modeling appeared in the Journal of Asian Studies in 2018, modeling the contested relationship between Analex, Mencius, and Xunzi, preliminary evidence from a machine learning approach. So what are topics? Well, technically, they're probability distributions across words. Essentially, they're collections of words that are weighted by their likelihood of having some relationship with each other. These weights are based on the contents of the documents in the input corpus. Words that often appear together in the same document tend to appear together as important words in the same topics. Now note that every topic will actually contain all of the words in the corpus, but the vast majority of the words will have a low weight. The algorithm itself does not provide a label for the topics, although scholars do like to label topics based on the most important words within them. So for example, a topic containing Topeka, Richmond, Montpelier, Hartford, Boston, and San Jose might be labeled US capitals. Now once these probability distributions have been calculated, the topic modeling algorithm will also provide how the topics are distributed within each document. So a document about automobiles will prominently feature topics that contain highly weighted words about engines, tires, suspensions, and so forth. A document about biology would feature words about animals, microbes, cells, and so on. A very nice thing about topic modeling is it can account for words that are spelled identically but are semantically distinct. So it can distinguish wind, the invisible stuff that blows our hats off into the river, from wind, the process of coiling something up. The idea behind topic modeling is essentially that any given topic in a corpus is generated out of the multiple latent topics it contains, but we have to discover these topics for ourselves. David Blay, the originator of the algorithm we're going to be talking about, refers to this as the hidden structure of a corpus, which we have to discover using the observed variables of the words within the documents. Now it's also possible to allow the algorithm to determine which topics are most prominent across the entire corpus. So if you're topic modeling Wikipedia, topics related to technology will probably be much more prominent than topics related to rare languages, for example. So how does this all work? Well, the process is intuitively, if not necessarily mathematically, fairly simple. Let's imagine that we have a corpus. Let's say it's the Federalist Papers, which is made up of 85 different documents. The first step is to decide how many topics we think generated these 85 documents. Now don't worry, it's actually pretty easy to just run another model if our choice of numbers of topics turns out to be not very sensible. Perhaps these documents were generated out of 10 topics, and maybe they're things like citizenship, war, taxation, agriculture, diplomacy, law, philosophy, bureaucracy, England, and maybe voting. Note that the Federalist Papers were written to defend the new US Constitution and encourage its ratification. The next thing we want to do is we want to make a bunch of copies of these documents and then dump all of the words from the corpus, essentially at random, into 10 different piles. Once we have our piles, we can pick one word from one of the piles, let's say it's power here, and then we can check if we think this word belongs in its current pile, or maybe we should move it to a different one. To do this, we look at how often this word appears in its current pile, how often the words in the current pile appear in the document that this word came from, and in this case, it came from Federalist 75. We then perform this calculation for each of the piles, and we can decide whether to keep the word where it is, or we can reassign it to a different pile that better matches up with the document at hand 
and the word itself. This assignment process makes the pile that we move the word to slightly more coherent, although at least initially imperceptibly so. But the next step is to move on to the next word, and we do the same thing, reevaluating that word. We do this millions and millions of times, and eventually we reach a state where the algorithm can't optimize anymore and it essentially hits an equilibrium. We now have our topics. Now, of course, we're actually adjusting probabilities rather than physically moving a word from one pile into another, but the concept is pretty similar. You'll probably have noticed that this approach only considers presence within a document, and it ignores syntactic content. This is known as a bag of words approach, and I think that is probably pretty clear from the way that those words shower down into one big pile. It turns out that bags of words are actually quite useful for a lot of analyses, including this one. Now there are a lot of tools out there that can do topic modeling for you, but the most popular is probably Mallet, developed by scholars at UMass Amherst. Now Mallet implements the Leighton Dirichlet allocation algorithm, which was originally developed by David Blay in 2002. This algorithm assumes that the prior probabilities of the topics are distributed according to a Dirichlet distribution. That is, what is the likely distribution of the topics before we've even accounted for any of the evidence? This informs the starting point of the algorithm. So when we start, we're really technically not doing things completely at random. It then uses Gibbs sampling to estimate the posterior distribution. Here, this means estimating the likelihood a word appears in a given topic, which essentially is what we're doing with our reassignment process. Now, it's important to realize that this process is probabilistic. This means that every time you rerun the algorithm, the output is going to be slightly different. This is expected and not something that you should be concerned about. Now you'll note a few interesting phenomenon as you start running topic models for yourself. First, if you've decided on too few topics, you'll notice that the topics tend not to be very coherent. Lots of seemingly unrelated words will tend to appear together. If you have too many topics, you'll tend to get a lot of topics that seem very similar to each other. Sometimes, depending on your input corpus, you might find that proper nouns really dominate your topics. This is often the case when you model things like fiction or newspaper articles. So, in these cases, you might need to prune certain words from your corpus before you start. Finally, please resist the urge to rerun your model with the same parameters again and again until you get a result you like it's really better to stick with a common result rather than finding an outlying result that matches your expectations. Now I've included some useful background reading in the description to this video, which will get a little bit more into the math of this. In the next video, I'll walk you through how to install the necessary software. After that, we'll talk about the code, and then we'll wrap up by talking about visualizing these models. I hope this was useful, and happy modeling!